Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab and today we are talking about the most important piece of DJ hardware ever made, the Technics SL1200 Mark II. It's hard to believe that it's now been five years since Panasonic ceased production of the Technics SL1200 range of turntables. Since the late 1970s, the 1200 has played a huge hand in the development of DJ culture and that's purely by accident. The SL1200 Mark II was designed as a hi-fi turntable but thanks to its rock-solid construction, feedback-resistant rubber base and stable, accurate, quartz-locked pitch adjustment, it quickly became the turntable of choice for DJs throughout the 80s and 90s and beyond. The direct drive motor was patented at the time of release and that gave Technics a huge advantage over other decks for DJing as having the platter itself incorporated into the motor meant vertical movement was limited in a way never seen before. Another reason why the 1200 was, for so long, the ultimate deck for the new scratching techniques being developed by hip-hop DJs. There have been many pretenders to the 1200's crown, most notably Vestax, but nothing ever quite approached the incredible lifespan and durability of the 1200, which may ultimately have contributed to its downfall. They just keep on trucking forever, never needing to be replaced. As the 1200 was never designed for DJ use, there are a couple of things which do eventually give up the ghost. The RCA cables, for example, which are soldered into place, and the target lamp and pitch slider are, in the end, consumable items, which will need replacing in time. Opening a 1200 can be a daunting task, but servicing one is perfectly feasible if you're handy with a soldering iron. I definitely recommend Viper Frank's tutorials on YouTube if you fancy getting your hands dirty. Otherwise, there are countless technicians around the world who will happily perform open deck surgery on your 1200s and help you keep them running as good as new. Thankfully, spare parts are still not too thin on the ground, even five years after the death of the product. Of course, there are always those who like to go a little beyond simple maintenance and like to customise and upgrade their decks. When it comes to looks, there are good quality skins out there from 12-inch skins, but this is one of my favourite non-permanent upgrades, steel deck plates by 1200plates.com. Made in the UK and shipped worldwide, they come in gold-plated, chrome and a variety of solid colour finishes. They aren't a new idea, I've used a few brands of deck plates in the past, but often i found the quality of finish to be a little underwhelming. The 1200 plates are very tidy indeed and really are a perfect fit on the deck, offering solid protection to the original finish whilst adding a bit of visual flair. They have designs to fit the Mark II as well as the M3D and Mark V and having used this one for a while I can recommend them wholeheartedly. I've picked up a few extra treats for this 1200, my vinyl ripping deck too, a gold pitch trim which are available on eBay and a gold plated counterweight, pointless but finishes the look quite nicely. We could do an entire video series on audio file upgrades to the 1200. That's a whole world of crazy I don't have time for in my life, but I'm a big fan of these Isono feet. They offer significantly improved isolation over the stock feet without making the deck too wobbly, and I've used them in both studio and club situations with great results. Ultimately, they don't do anything that a bunch of rubber bands stretched over an ashtray can't do, but they are more aesthetically pleasing to be sure. Now, if you're ready for the next level of customising and aren't afraid to make some permanent changes to your beloved 1200s and you can afford it, then it's time to turn to a company like DJ's Dream Customs. When I reviewed their ice head shell a few months ago, I was blown away by the Technics modding options they had on their website. My 1210s are almost 15 years old now, both needed new RCA cables and one of the tone arms was slightly bent, so I decided to go for a full custom job. So I packed up my decks, sent them off to Germany with a few vague instructions and waited nervously to see what would arrive back. And I certainly wasn't disappointed. What have they done? Well, we've got the DJ City red and white colour scheme everywhere. Our logo and the Technics markings are all incorporated into the finish, not rough sticker jobs. Everything about the paint job is beautifully finished to a really high standard. Not all customizers will paint the rubber bases and the feet, so I'm intrigued to see how well that holds up. Certainly seems solid so far. One mod which has been around for a while now is having a set of Novation dicers built into the deck itself. For me, dicers are an absolute essential for DJing with Serato DJ on turntables, so having them built right into the deck is truly awesome and makes for a super clean look. Another mod which DJ's Dream Customs offer is potentially life-changing, doing away with hardwired audio leads and replacing them with a set of RCA sockets. This means I never again have to experience the nightmare of flaky cables on my decks. At the first sign of trouble, I can plug in a new lead, job done. The sockets are mounted horizontally, 
unlike some similar mods I've seen, which means that almost any cable can be used. They've internally grounded the DEX2, and the rear of the cable box has the USB and mini jack sockets for the dicers as well. Very clean. There's one mod which I was in two minds about, but decided to go for in the end, the straight arms. Since DJ Focus releases straight arm mod for 1200s many years ago, there have been a few different takes on the idea. DJ's Dream Customs use a longer arm than the Focus design, meaning the stylus hits the grooves at some degrees off the tangential axis found on the regular 1200S shaped arm. There are definite upsides to this. The tracking is incredible with the needle staying locked in the groove whatever you do. The potential downside is that record wear could be significantly higher and you definitely can't use elliptical styli. In the end, I'm happy that I went with it. These decks are mostly used for DVS anyway, and it'll be interesting to experiment with them for real vinyl. The tracking ability really is phenomenal. It's worth noting that Shaw actually recommend offsetting the M44-7 carts by 23 degrees for heavy scratching using S-arms, matching the angle on these straight arms. I didn't realize until very recently it's right there in the manual. RTFM, Mojax, right? Speaking of carts, you'll notice some rather tasty custom painted M44-7s on these decks. Now, based on the job they've done for me, I absolutely recommend everyone in Europe send their decks to DJ's Dream Customs to be modded, but I can't reasonably suggest that our US viewers all do the same. Shipping is going to be a significant expense with such heavy items, and you'll be stung by import duty at least one way, if not both. So I reached out to DJ Henry Customs in California. I'd heard good things about their work and wanted to get an example of it to review before making any recommendations. Suffice to say, I'm very impressed. The red carts really pop and the head shells are genuine Technics models, which always feel more substantial than generic versions. Henry Customs do a lot of similar mods to those of DJ's Dream Customs, and having seen this example, I'm happy to suggest them to US viewers who want to find a modder a bit closer to home. So there we go, a look at the Technics SL1200 Mark II and ways we can maintain, modify and upgrade them to keep them fresh, keep them relevant in 2016 and beyond. You know, these things are around 30 years old now. There are units out there which are 30 years old and still going strong. This literally is a product that if you look after it, you maintain it, it will last you a lifetime. There are not many products you can really say that about. You know, I think with careful maintenance and upgrading and looking after them, we'll still be seeing them in another 30 years. I'll be doing a video about them then. YouTube will be dead and buried. I'll be beaming straight into your eyeballs or something. But the Technics SL1200 will still be working and it will still be relevant. It will still be a thing in 30 years time because these are a miracle of engineering. DJing as a whole owes a massive debt to Panasonic for creating the Technics SL1200. Without this, DJing would look very different or it would have taken a lot longer to get to where it got to. So even if you never touched a piece of vinyl, if you only started DJing on an iPad or a controller, you still owe that thanks to Panasonic for inventing this turntable because it made DJing what it is today. So let's pour some out for our dead homies and let's look after these techniques we've still got around. Let's make sure we keep them going for another 30 years and I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks and product reviews. I'll see you soon.